Hi, this is Rob Carolina, and this is the first in a series of talks about cybersecurity password combinations. This first talk is just about introducing how to calculate the size of key space. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because I'm interested in relative strength of passwords, and I know that password strength is related to the number of possible password combinations, the size of the key space. I really wanted to develop a more intuitive feel for how to calculate the size and then understand the impact on how that size is reduced when certain types of passwords are excluded. The challenge is, I'm a lawyer, not a mathematician, and I wanted to get sort of an intuitive understanding about what was going on without taking a class in combinatorics. Nothing wrong with that, it just wasn't for me. I also assumed, well, if I want to get a better feel for this, maybe there are some other people out there who want the same thing. So the way I've divided these talks, this first talk is about just understanding basic key space calculations. If you already understand that, you might want to go ahead and jump straight to talk number two. That talks about how to calculate passwords that get excluded by policies. And then in talk three, I'll talk about the impact of those exclusion policies. Throughout these talks, I am going to rely entirely on pre-university mathematics. So, let's get to it. How do you calculate the size of a key space? Version 1, the simple version. Well, if we let C equal the number of characters available for a passcode, and X is the length of the password, then we can define S as the size of the resulting key space, and we calculate that. Simple math. Size of the key space is equal to the number of characters available raised to the power of the length of the password. S equals C raised to the power of X. Now, because it's convenient to talk about key space size in bits, I'll give you the formula for understanding how to convert this into an expression of bits, and it's log base 2 of C to the X. It's the same number, s. It's just expressed in a different unit of measure. Now let me give an example of this. Let's assume that I have a luggage lock, and that luggage lock has three wheels. Each of the wheels on that lock has 10 possible characters, the numerals, 0 through 9. How many combinations are available? Well, we know the size of this key space. S equals 10 raised to the power of 3. That means there are a thousand combinations. And when we run this through log base 2, we discover that that's roughly equivalent to 9.97 bits. Now, before you get too hung up on bits, remember, 9.97 bits is just a way of saying that there are 2 raised to the power of 9.97 combinations. And that's kind of important because people like to understand key space in terms of what does it take to double the size of key space. So every time you add a bit to the key space, you're doubling the size. You're doubling the number of passwords that your attacker needs to guess. Or you might be doubling the amount of money they have to invest in equipment to guess those passwords. So every time we add a bit, we're doubling the size of the key space. And in my little luggage lock, with three wheels, there are 9.97 bits in that key space. Now, by the way, I do have a luggage lock with three wheels, and not too long ago, for reasons I won't get into, kind of funny story, um, we ended up, my wife and I ended up accidentally resetting the combination to a number that we didn't know. And so one night, I decided to perform a brute force attack, attack on that luggage lock. Sitting in front of the TV, I just tried one combination at a time. And I think it took me maybe 30 or 45 minutes to try 50% of those combinations. Now, obviously, that's a very, very slow attack process, but it gives you an idea of why we're measuring this stuff. Let's get a couple other examples out. Let's say now I've got a luggage lock that has a fourth wheel. I add a fourth wheel with the numbers 0 through 9 in it. Well, now the size of the key space is 10 to the fourth, 10,000 combinations, 10 times as many. 13.29 bits. Well, I can guarantee you that I, I would not be sitting down in front of the television trying that number of combinations. So 2 raised to the power of 13.29 is the number of combinations available in this particular scheme. 
And notice that by just adding one wheel, we increased the key space by about 3.3 bits. Keep your eye on those bit numbers because they become very interesting. Just to really drive the message home, if we add a fifth wheel onto the luggage lock, we now have 10 to the fifth combinations, which is 16.61 bits. And notice that adding a wheel has once again increased the key space by about 3.3 bits. Now let's change away from just a numbers only passphrase, and let's go and use letters. So now we're going to assume that we're trying to calculate the key space of a password that must be six characters long. So the passwords in these circumstances, it's going to be six characters long, and the only available characters are lowercase letters, A through Z. There are 26 of them. Now that means that the size of the key space is 26 raised to the sixth power. And you get out your calculator, you'll find that that's about 308.9 million combinations, or 28.20 bits. Interesting. So the key space is getting pretty significantly bigger because we've increased the number of characters available from 10 up to 26, and we've increased the length of the password up to 6. Well, let's see what happens when we do a bit more of that. Let's increase the password to 8 characters long. Let's increase the password length up to 8. But we'll still only use those 26 lowercase letters. Well, now we've got 26 to the 8th combinations, or 37.60 bits of key space. Now again, if you want to analogize this to where we started, imagine the world's most uninteresting luggage lock, a gigantic sort of thing that has eight wheels, and each wheel has 26 letters on it. Now, I don't know who would buy a luggage lock like that, but let me know if there's one for sale. Let's play around with some other parameters here. Now, let's assume that the password is still eight characters long, but we increase the number of available characters. In addition to lowercase letters, A through Z, we also have uppercase letters available, and the 10 numerals. Well, now, the number of available characters has moved from 26 all the way up to 62. 26 lowercase, 26 uppercase, and 10 numerals. We have 62 characters to choose from. The password is 8 characters long, which means the size of the key space, 62 to the power of 8, or... 47.63 bits. So even without lengthening the password beyond eight characters, adding in uppercase and numerals gave us 10 extra bits. So that seems to be a pretty good thing in terms of increasing key space. One last example for this lecture, and that is, what happens when we add five special characters? We still have a password of length eight. But now we add five special characters. And by special characters, I just mean those things that you see on your keyboard that aren't letters and aren't numbers. Usually the ones that are often uh, allowed will be things like an exclamation point, uh, the at symbol, uh, maybe a percent sign or the dollar sign, things like that. Well, if we only have five of them available, it does increase the key space a little bit. Not by much, but it does. Now, you might be asking, Rob, why did you choose only five special characters? Aren't there way more than that on the keyboard? Well, there are, and there are more than that available in the ASCII character set as well, if you're looking at this from a computer science perspective. The problem is that many, many password policies that I see will not allow the full spread of special characters, and that's because the system that they're operating on will not react well if you feed some of those special characters through their password function. So very often I get presented with password policies that say, well, you have to include a special character, or you're allowed to include a special character, but here's a short list of four, five, or six special characters, and they're the only ones you're allowed to use. So I've chosen five, and I'll be using that all the way through until the very end of lecture number three. Well. Now that we've calculated the size of the key space for a password of length 8 and 67 characters available, there's a problem. And that is, for a lot of very good reasons, security policies impose limits 
on which passwords we're allowed to use. And this means that entire categories of passwords are excluded. They're just thrown out. So, for example, if we have a password policy that says a password must include at least one uppercase letter, at least one lowercase letter, at least one numeral, and at least one special character, then there are a number of passwords that will not be allowed. And here's an example of four passwords that will not be allowed. There are many others, but here's some examples. The first one is rejected because it has no uppercase letters. The second is rejected because there are no lowercase. The third is rejected because it has no numerals. And the last one is rejected because it has no special character. Well, I say that there are a number of passwords that are not allowed. I want to know how to calculate what that number is. That will be the subject of talk number two. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and leave a comment below. My thanks to the Information Security Group, where I teach legal and regulatory aspects of cybersecurity, especially for comments from Professor Chris Mitchell and Darren Hurley-Smith. I'm grateful for comments from my test audience, Gabe Komick, Dan Hauser, Sonia Milibat, Carolina, Mark Milton, and Alec Muffet. And a special thanks to Professor Fred Piper for introducing me to the idea of combinatorics.